Good morning, fellow Amazonians. Today, now Wednesday, number 20 day for this month of March 2024. My name is Kapo Daniel, Wuna own countryman, Sense Pass King, Mr. No Koni, Wuna welcome to our daily podcast, a program where they bring Wuna the truth. It bring una meaningful information, fact-based analysis for help we as we work out for this journey to our freedom, to the independence of Ambazonia. Our country people at home and abroad, IDPs, refugees, political prisoners, I bring una all revolutionary greetings. Philemon Yang, Idan Hall press conference with routers for Yaoundé yesterday. For the press conference, it talks since 2017, Ambazonian fighter them, they don't succeed for key 84 Cameroon troops. What a joke. I will bring on the details shortly. And also one Ambazonian comrade, a patriot and a senior comrade for our struggle, he then sent out a letter for me and uh, Chris Anu. I just find the letter very interesting I will read that later. But first, would you get details for which way happened for Insa Batibo? We yesterday for morning morning time for Monday. People them the same message say ADF it and key three people them. We then finally talk for one of the people the way they will be on the scene, where they be also be catch with the SD ADF or have a chill be catch them as well. We will give you exactly which way happened. One of our mami them for ground zero. Uh, I think a moment that he always care over. He then sent me some call yesterday and he talked very deeply about our report. And he talked, say, when would he bring out the report about our own atrocity them? Sometimes he worry because he didn't listen up, he did over trouble. So I go on for address our people them on this reporting on our own atrocity them and make them understand who side would they come from. Over the years, this struggle and our psychology within the struggle for Ambazonia, it has evolved a lot. A lot of people they never notice, but some of us who take responsibility for this struggle would note down everything so that we will be able to push the struggle in the right direction. Would that evolve over time? When this struggle will be start for 2016 and the fighting is start for 2017, we will be very shocked, or I could call them say shocked allies. For Cameroon, their repression against our teachers and our lawyers and our students. We were all terrified. We were shocked to our core to see how lawyers were being beaten by untrained policemen who should know better. We see how students' quarter were invaded by gendarmes who came all the way from Douala in their nomas, beaten up, raped, tortured. Some of them disappeared in their student quarters. We were so shocked that what type of human beings could turn on innocent civilians who are unarmed, who are shouting no violence, waving the peace plant, what type of human being will go around butchering these people? We question the francophones. Why would the francophones stay quiet? Why their children goes around burning our village in Kwakwa, burning down all senior citizens who cannot work, killing mad people? burning blind Hausa people in Bui, and yet the Francophones are silent. And the quest we question, is it only for sovereignty? Why will somebody allow the killing of people? What is the justification? They should just let our people go. If they hate us so much or they could perpetrate so much violence against our people, why don't just let them go? The main justification in La Republic was that it was important to keep the country together. It is for the bigger picture. The sovereignty surpasses every other argument. You can kill to maintain one Cameroon. That has always been the argument. At every cost, keep them under control. Eight years down the line, Ambazonians have evolved. Certain things that we used to accuse La Republic of. Collecting money on the street for our taxi drivers, 5500. Collecting tax and revenue where you don't see anywhere it goes have come to mar our liberation struggle. Leadership quality is the ability to resist the temptation to go down this road. 
to become like the enemy, to march the enemy method by method, not against the enemy, but against our own people. That is the greatest temptation and the leadership quality for those of us who have studied people like Mao Zedong. He said it is very easy to start a fight, but to maintain the conduct and morality of that fight is even more important than the fight itself. A leader must defeat the demons of corruption and the temptation to treat your own people like you would do to the enemy in order to succeed. Ambazonian have missed that mark. We question why do we report on our own atrocities. Mancho BBC, the father of the Coffin Revolution, once said, all for one, one for all. The blood of each Ambazonian should matter for all of us like it was ourselves. Ebenezer Akwanga once said, we should fight this liberation struggle like it all depends on us and us alone. Today, Ambazonia have been caught in that logic where they themselves, like the Francophones, say it is okay for few people to die, to be killed for the bigger picture. It is okay to cover up the death of few people and to even forget them. It is okay for the bigger picture, for the sake of Ambazonia, for the sake of our independence. It is okay for even Kemende to be killed. It is okay for 12 people to be killed in Chair Street. It is okay for two people to be murdered, publicly executed, innocent blood spilled in Gozang for the bigger picture. It is okay for our soldiers to kidnap. Mark Barata once even said that it is okay for because of Hungary, soldiers, Amazonian fighters have the right to kidnap people for ransom. What a joke. That is the definition of defeat. The morality of a cause is what drives the cause. Tyrants and the foolish one says the ends justifies the means. That means whatever the means it needed, you must arrive at the end. So the ends justify the means. That is the mistake of tyrant and that is the definition of evil. When you think you can do everything possible just to get to the end. The end also you should is also defined by the means. We should never forget that. Whatever means you use to reach to an end would define what type of end you get. A married man who thinks it is okay for the wife to sleep with other men to take or to sleep with his enemy in order to get money to feed their children have lost their marriage and have lost their mind. The ends do not only justify the means, the ends define the means. We cannot accept the killing of our own people, the cover up of death of our own people, thinking somehow we are going to have an end of independence. Independence itself is determined by how we move towards that direction. Have we demonstrated to our own people that this is for their interest and to those who grant the independence that they have no choice and what we are going to have is better than what we are running away from. We do not talk about our own atrocity because we want to condemn our end. It's because we want that end to be defined by what we do today. The aim of the enemy right from the beginning have always been to make us to look like them, to say that we are all the same. They try to hire the Amber boys or the Atanganji boys to fight and kill our own people so that we will be the same like them. Our soldiers will be killing people in the name of Ambazonia like their own soldiers are killing our own people in the name of one Cameroon. They want us to be corrupted to show that there is no difference between we and them. All those who pursue the route to become like the enemy is self-defeating to our cause and those who are genuinely fighting for our people the interests of our people will want nothing to do with any quality of the enemy we will not replicate la republic to cameroon in ambazonia every group in ambazonia that have transformed themselves or evolved into cpdm type of court where they give blind support to their leaders hand clappers cheering on even when innocent people are murdered have defeated the purpose of the struggle and they have derailed and they have failed and they are no longer a part of the positive movement of Ambazonian liberation. We will stand for one Ambazonians who is killed, irrespective of who killed them. We will stand for justice for the Ambazonian people, for their dignity, for these are all protected in well-guided principles that must lead us to our freedom.
without which it leads us to hell and nowhere. We must fight for the spirit and the core of what we are fighting for, as vigorously as those who fight to undermine those principles. Like Mao Zedong said, maintaining principled discipline is more important than the war itself, because if you lose that, you lose the nation, you lose the liberation movement, even if you win at the end. So fellow Ambazonians, we're going to read what uh, the, the two documents, one the statement of the press conference made by Philemon Yang in Yaoundé, and the document or the letter that was written to myself, I think, and Chris Anu, by some uh, veteran Southern Cameroon, and as I will call them our elites in this struggle. But first, I want to update our people what actually happened in uh, Bonji, in Batibo, as we were receiving reports that people were killed and videos for people taken into the mortuary that were allegedly killed by the ADF. Now we can confirm to you people that we have spoken to relative eyewitness who were involved in this incident that yes, indeed, the ADF executed one businessman in Ngowu Ambo. He was shot at his stomach in Bonji. He was a businessman called Ni Moses. There is no reason for why he was killed. He was just killed like that. We are unable to establish a reason. It may just be one of those uh, usual summary execution that the ADF does. We condemn such killing. Nobody have the power and the right to take innocent life. It is a crime against our people and the blood of the innocent will continue to cry for justice against their perpetrators. According to information, this man also was leaving Ambu, was struggling to come to Bamenda and they were passing through Mbunji going to going through Bali to come to Bamenda. A lot of people are running away from those villages from what we have confirmed. Some have already arrived in Bamenda. Some are in Old Town in Bamenda. So he was shot there along with many other people who were killed when the ADF people came to um, Mbunji. From information we heard, nine bike men were arrested, were, were held by the ADF, who came very early in the morning to Kolengbu, as they have been doing for the past years. Every morning, they come to to um, Bonji. They come also to, to Batibo area to collect palm wine. They usually will come there very early in the morning, sometimes 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning before daybreak. That was on Monday. They came there. They were arrested, all of them in a group, and they were laid on the ground. After consultation and phone calls, decision was made that two of them should be killed to show an example. So two palm wine tappers were executed in uh, Bonji as well, and the rest were left. They have come back to Bamenda. That is what the ADF done. That is what Ayabacho is doing to our people. And then another one man who is a carpenter was shot in the bike together with one of his relatives that were driving from a uh, uh, Batibo from out of Bonji, passing through Bonji. Also, they were trying to come to Bamenda very, very early before people wake up in the morning. So a total of five people, five dead body lies in uh, in a Bonji by killed by Abacho and his boys. And I want our people to know this and we are fighting for every Ambazonian and we'll fight for those people as well. Anybody who is following Ayabacho and pretends that he does not know what he's doing or thinks that what he's doing can free us, that person have a mental problem. Ayabacho is a psychopath. He has this, this derailed our forces. He has misinformed them. His radicalism against our own people is rejected. It's not something that will help us. It's coming from the devil himself. We want radicalism against La Republic. We want radicalism against the army of Cameroon, not against our own innocent people. You cannot execute people who are simply trying to survive and make ends means. You cannot. You just no morally cannot. You cannot associate yourself with any righteous person or any good or moral person if that is what you are doing. Anybody who does not know or see these things and stand by La Repo and stand by Ayabacho should see exactly how the struggle have fallen. We are standing with people who look more than and worse than poor Bia. That should not happen. And anyway, without much ado, let's proceed. First, we'll read the document that was uh, made by Phil the press conference from Philemon Yang so that our people can know. And this will give our people a window. Because if you lose a war and the victor have to rewrite history, 
we will cry in our grief. So anyway, let us read what uh, Philemon Young gave to the Rutas in the press conference in Yaoundé yesterday. I will read it for the most part. It says the armed separatists in English-speaking region of Cameroon have killed 80 soldiers and policemen since insurgency began in September 2017, 2016. <laughs> what a joke. Okay, he said that what began in late 2016 as peaceful movement calling for greater representation by the Anglophone have moved into heavy-handed government response with troops shoot at civilians with helicopter gum sheep and burnt villages. I think this is a, a comment from Routers, not what he said, that has bolstered the support for some Anglophone Cameroonians who wants to form a new state called Ambazonia. The unrest in the e-oil and cocoa producing southwest and northwest region often evolve into hit and run attacks by insurgents against the army. Then I think this is what the 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 man said, the lap dog of Pobia Philomon Yang. This is what he said. They put it in quote. Statistic as of first June 2018, this is the, the what he gave to the routers, show that 123 attacks have been carried out by Ambazonian fighters claiming 84 lives. <laughs> this is a joke. He said that it includes 32 soldiers, 41 gendarmes, and 7 police officers, 2 prison warders, and 1 echo guard. This facts and statistic was presented by Prime Minister Philemon Yang in uh, the press conference that took place in Yaoundé. The routers also noted that in February this year, the Cameroon military spokesperson had said that 22 Cameroon soldiers and policemen had been killed within the past five months. So if 22 people were killed within the past five months, <laughs> then you estimate a war that have taken 80 years, then you can imagine what a lie and what a joke Philemon Yang is. And this should inform our people that if we allow this war to get into a total loss scenario, La Republic will write a history that we will be mourning in our graves. Our great-grandchildren will read that history and they will believe it because any other version will be banned and seen as betrayal of the state. So we cannot allow these people to get us in a captured state. We will do everything to avoid a total loss scenario. And the path we believe, can, which is the only viable alternative, the only attainable way for Ambazonia to move forward is to demand for the devolution of Cameroon that is going to preserve our nationalism, our patriotism, our education history, and a pathway to independence through democratic means such as obtained by Scotland and Northern Ireland with Great Britain. Fellow Ambazonians, the letter written by veteran Ambazonian elites that is addressed to my person and Chris Anno, I will just read it because I find the content a little bit interesting and it has some cultural uh, implication, which I always do the cultural war, the cultural warrior version so i'll just read it to the public with the permission of this uh, patriot it says dear sir endele and foncha knew better there are eight million people in southern cameroon and they have all heard of chris anu or sako or capo dania this also means that eight million people of southern cameroon are influenced positively or negatively by both capo daniel and chris anu May I therefore remind both Capo and Chris Anno that together they hold the power and responsibility over 8 million people. In a democracy, we expect our leaders to disagree passionately on many issues, but we expect them to be respectful of each other as a show of respect for the position they hold and a respect to us, their followers. A lesson to be learned from Endele and Foncha. Endele and Foncha were political opposite, opposed to each other. One wanted us to join Nigeria. The other wanted us to join Cameroon. They never accused each other of receiving bribes from Nigeria or Cameroon. Even as political enemies, with no convergence on their views, they respect each other 
and the population. Whenever there was a meeting to discuss matter that affects Southern Cameroon, both Foncha and Endili were involved and represented the people of Southern Cameroon that led their factions. Today, you hear that the Swiss peace process and some leaders refused to attend and demonize those who were involved. Then you hear of the Canadian talks and some began to demonize it because they hold different views from others. I expect everyone who has a leadership role to be present in every negotiation or dialogue opportunity for our people. If for nothing else, to learn what is being discussed and what prevailing views are there. All our leaders should have sent delegates to the 2019 Grand National Dialogue, not to be threatened into compliance by La Republic, but to let it be known that La Republic has knowledge that the problem and has taken a first hand and adequate step to listen to our people's plight and they cannot deny that they have not heard. Dialogue and peace negotiation usually takes over 30 engagement in over five national capitals. The Swiss effort was designed to be the next step to offer other concession, but our leaders did not engage and fearing rejection, La Republic du Cameroon withdrew from it. Canada initiative was designed to be a site for more negotiations and concessions from both sides. But again, our people began to demonize each other and it impacted the Canadian talks. While the next discussions will, be, will not be the last, I expect all our leaders to participate in any and all talks that takes place in the future. Leaders who refuse to participate in the next round of talks do so because they feel they know it all already. Such persons is not listened to, but it does not listen to the community who wants their leaders to invest in genuine peacemaking. Both Endele and Foncha passionately disagreed on the different directions of Southern Cameroon, but they always stand up and represent their views respectfully. If there is a meeting inside a tent negotiating a solution to end the war, we expect all our leaders to be involved and not have one leader outside the tents urinating on those inside the dialogue. Endele and Foncha knew it better. With that, we call it the day for the podcast of today. Capo Daniel looking out for you. Signing off.